This is A Game. Fast acting, long lasting, with no side effects. Hey, all my Crimsonites, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel, where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So, join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, my Crimson Knights, and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel. I'm your host, Femininity Coach and author of the Crimson Cure, and this is my perspective. So we're really continuing the conversation about high-value men, and this one is talking to the women again about why black women can't have a high-value man. See, it's not that you've probably never run into one, although they're not just, you know, sprouting up like dandelions all over the place but they're not so rare that you probably have not run into one or a man on his way to be one. Um, and you didn't know how to keep him. I have a video to show you about two minutes long. And this lady speaking facts about the behavior of high value men and really the expectation of the woman. So I want you to listen carefully to what she said. And then we're going to come back and cook about, this high value man situation and continue this conversation. So here we go. Let me go ahead and share my screen for you. Here we go. Big time husband that does well in business on a couple of companies. Ooh, but they ain't gonna like this one, but I'm gonna tell them anyway. This will help you make a more informed decision on whether you wanna date the high value affluent man. There's a great message at the end of that video, she, um, but she starts off talking about how she knows this woman who's married to a high value affluent man. And when she's sitting around with women who don't have husbands of the same caliber, she acts like they're on one accord as far as how they handle their men. She acts like she handles her husband the same way that they handle their husbands. Absolutely false. Ladies, you're not going to like this. You can't handle this man over here like you handle those men over there. This is a whole different ball game. Let me give you a couple of examples that are really going to get your goose in a gander. <laughs> all that? No, ma'am. You can kill all that. Then get back. And if you were with the man before him that kind of let you run the show even a little bit, cancel that whole thought process. It's over. Because a lot of us say we want an alpha man, a dominant man. Let me let you know something. You will be loved. You will be re highly regarded. You will be respected. But you will be in your place in that man's life. I know that's, that sounds uncomfortable because everybody's going to be like, what is a woman's place? I'm not even going to play semantics with you. If that didn't annoy you, I'm going to tell you one other thing. A conversation I had with, with my ex, he said, I expect just as much respect as your boss. Me? What? <laughs> oh, you must have lost your mind. And he says, tell me why you respect your boss more than you respect your respect me. I was like, because he's the one who signs my check. He, he said, you already know if we get married that you don't have to work. So you would be making the choice for him to sign your check. So that does not make him have more of your respect than me. What else? So I was like, I mean, that's how I feed my family. He's like, you are my family. I will feed our family. What else? So I'm running out of stuff to say. And I'm like, I mean, well, he's the person in charge. He manages everybody. Every He said, is that not the role of a husband? The husband that you say you want? Just, you can't handle them the same way. So you have to make a, an informed decision on whether you are really ready to pay, play that position um, of being on their arm. You can't handle them the way that gir your girlfriends handle them. In fact, you can't handle them. They will not be handled, sweetheart. <laughs> be okay. So I'm going to stop sharing this. Okay. And she was speaking facts and I have to think that she probably speaking somewhat from experience because at, towards the end when she was giving an example, she said of her ex. So maybe she had a high value man and didn't know how to keep him. I don't know what she has now. I don't know if she found another man or anything like that. I don't know anything about her, but from what she said in that clip, sound like she had a high value man and she didn't know what to do with him. She didn't know because she didn't realize that she couldn't tell him stuff like, I respect my boss more than I respect you because she was about to say fiance. So it seemed like they had gotten quite deep into their relationship. And, you know, 
for whatever reason, it didn't work out. I don't know why it didn't work out. But here's the point. The point is, Black women have been taught to be so masculine and so domineering in relationship that you really get, y'all really want these little soft boys. Like y'all want a softer guy. Like you want a guy that's kind of got that simp in his blood a little bit. Like you kind of need that guy. If you're the type of woman that can't tolerate a whole lot of order coming to you and a man that's really going to be letting you know, like, look, no, you don't run me. You don't run nothing I got. I run you. This is how this is going to go. And he does it in a in a compassionate way. He does it in a righteous way. He's not trying to abuse. He's not trying to do none of that crazy stuff. But in, in, in no uncertain terms, you know that he runs things. He runs his life. If you're in his life, he run you. He run what's going on with you. He got to know what's going on. Like he is too aware and he's too much in, in, dependent upon to know what's going on and be able to do and give his four P's and all that kind of stuff on a consistent basis at a consistent level that he can't have these unknowns and these variables running around him like this. So you can't be introducing yourself as a variable and as an unknown in his life, one that he can't depend upon or rely upon. Like you become unreliable and unpredictable. Like he can't do that. It was someone in the comment section, some of the women in the comment section, like I can attest to this, had a couple of men like this in my life and lost them because I kept running my mouth. I keep running my mouth. So I lost out on different opportunities to be with these types of men that we say we want, but because I couldn't adjust to the fact that he couldn't be ran by me. I couldn't run my game. I couldn't run, you know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't do all of the stuff that works for these other types of men. It, it don't work for him. It doesn't work on him. The game running don't work on him. He's seen it before a million times. He's not impressed. It don't work. As a matter of fact, it makes him disgusted and he's going to tell you to get out of his face. So here's the thing. Y'all be wanting them soft boys. And this is exactly kind of what you need. Because when you sit there and say you want a man that's super masculine and this big time leader and you want him to have this type of money and you want him to be able to, you know, move and shake. And you know what I'm saying? You want him, you want one of these master of the universe type guys. You know what I'm saying? Like you want that guy. Like when he walk in the room, that's that dude. Like you want that guy, but a lot of you can't handle that guy because you're so used to handling men. You're so used to having men in your life that's all about you. Well, when it comes to alpha, when it comes to this high value man, you are, you are the employee. He the boss and you the employee, not the other way around. And she kind of revealed why she doesn't have that man anymore, I would I would guess, because she started saying how she was talking to, talking to him about why her boss needed more respect than him, and she was already in a relationship with him. You can't tell no man that. How about you really or otherwise? You can't really tell no man that, because now you honoring a man that's not me. So why do I need you around? Why do I need a woman that, that can be in a relationship with me currently and tell me to my face she honor another man more than me? That's not going to work, okay? The You want the high value man, like I said before in my live stream, because he's a total package, right? Um, because this man... He's got a lot of love. He shows a lot of support. He shows a lot of understanding. He's very patient and he's very forgiving, but that's only to a point. He simply does not tolerate the chaos. He does not tolerate all of your BS, your untamed chaos, your never ending trouble, and not any ounce of your threat. He's not going to deal with your threat at all. Period, point blank. Like he's not going to deal with that. Having a never-ending mouth, problematic. All of that city girl, you know what I'm saying? Don't give a F about it. Like, he ain't trying to hear none of that. He not trying to have none of that energy nowhere near him. He do not need that energy. That is a chaotic. See, all that hyena, gyno, crap, masculine behavior that black women think is cute, that is the very behavior that he's avoiding. All of that stuff while you think you're going to run your mouth at with him and you think you're going to tell him what's what and you think you're going to like that's not going to work. Like just like 
the uh, example of 90 Day Fiance. If any of you watched that, the, the Muslim couple, Bilal and Shaida, okay? Bilal is a high value man. From everything that I can see, he's a high value man. He's got his spirituality intact, okay? He's a practicing Muslim. He seemed like he got his health intact. You know what I'm saying? He is not a fat, sloppy guy at all. He has gone around his family, seemed like his family dynamics are good, okay? His appearance is, is good. His dwelling is good. It's peaceful, Okay, he, he goes and get his children and all this other type of stuff. He's a wealthy man. So his mobility is good. His education is good. His profession is good. It aligns with his um, spiritual value, I would assume. And also his leisure seems to be good. And he obviously, like he has obvious wealth. Okay. And every time you see this interaction, she's exasperated with this man. Now, mind you, before she got there, she was all head over heels with him because he was a high value man. But once she got in his space where there was a lot of order, her chaos came to the front. And he's dealing with her because he's in, has invested time with her, right? I think they were talking two years before she got into his space. So with the 90 day fiance thing, the thing is you get the type of visa that you need to come and they got, they got 90 days to get married or she has to go back home. I think she's from Trinidad. So, uh, she's a very pretty woman. She's a very in shape woman. You know what I'm saying? She's a Muslim woman and all of this other kind of stuff, but she got a lot of gynocrat in her. I can see that she got a lot of gynocrat. She got a lot of argumentativeness in her. She got a lot of masculine a lot of combative and that is the way she gonna lose that man if she don't stop doing that she gonna lose him she's gonna be one of them women as well i had the opportunity to get a high value man but i didn't know how to act with this dude and she's in her 30s like he's in his early 40s i do believe so it's like no and she like why come every time you know what i'm saying i be around you you be lecturing me because he's in teach mode He's realizing he's got to get you up to speed more. Now that you're in his presence, he got to get up to speed more. And she's showing him things that you can't get out of a phone conversation or out of a FaceTime. You got to get around that person. And so now he's seeing it. So he's having patience with her. But at the same time, he's like, you, you got to get rid of the threat. You got to sign a prenup. You got to, and she's mad at it. She's like mad at it. Why I got to sign a prenup? He's like, listen, I don't know you like that and you love me today but you might not love me 10 years from now you gonna need to sign a prenup beloved and he didn't say it mean he listen he takes her out on these fancy dates and extravagant dates she's all in his house you know what i'm saying it is in a mansion and you can tell from the dynamic that they're not having sex you can tell by her frustration with him they're not having any sex they're not having sex i can tell you can look at them he, they're not, he's not smashing her. He's probably making her wait. Now I'm not doing that with you. Aside from the spiritual aspect that, you know, Muslims ain't supposed to do that. He's not, he's not even like breaking down and doing it anyway. Like mm -mm. you can tell he's not doing it. You can tell he, he will send her back to Trinidad dry and without a nikah, without a marriage. Because he's actually, this is like the last stages of his vetting process. And she's not doing a very good job. I can tell you that right now. She's not doing a very good job. Okay? At all. She needs to close her mouth. And she needs to become, listen more to what he's talking about. Because he's actually trying to tell her how to keep him. And she's not listening to him. She wants to be, she want to run. She, she want to just be chaotic and she want to do what she want to do. And he don't have that. He like, no, 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 no. There's order here. So you can't do the little stuff that you be doing at the house. That's fine at your house, but it ain't fine in here. And I ain't even got you in here trying to cook clean, dude. I don't need you to do none of that stuff. I just need you to be you. I just need you to be my wife. Show me how you're going to be my wife. And she's not doing a good job. This is the same one that wanted to do skibbity paps in the car. Like, no. So you got over that hump, but it's another hump and another hump and another hump because she do this too much. She think being fine going to win him over, but he knew you was fine to begin with. He know how you look. This is one reason why he's talking to you. If y'all haven't watched that little, just them, 
Just watch that dynamic. It's a trip. But anyway, what else is a trip is the fact that Black Lives Matter ran off, or, you know, ran off on the plug twice. They ran off with the $90 million that was supposed to help the black community and they spent it on themselves. So we have a petition that is designed to hold Black Lives Matter as an organization accountable for that. So the link to that petition is in the description box. Please go ahead and sign it if you have not. Share it and contribute to it if you can. Also sound off in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your host, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. Bye-bye, Crimsonites. Hey guys, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. And if you've got more to say on the topic, leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget to support our sponsor who so graciously supports this channel by clicking the description box and the link for A-Game at agameherbal.com. You can go ahead and get a 10% discount off of your next purchase using the code Kendra10. This has been yet another Crimson Cure production, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.